obviously if we can do regular numbers, we can also do trig functions. And so that's what this topic's all about. And it's basically the same idea. Uh, the chart though becomes a little more important than this because um, the manipulations of numbers kind of halfway goes through it in this in the trig situation. What you're going to have to do for this is look for the uh, column that has a specific um, uh, trigonometric function that you can change to back to the, uh, the uh, function form going from the derivative to the function is the antiderivative process. So that's what you're going to have to look at. If you can't find it, then you're going to have to do some mathematical manipulation. I know how insecure you guys are with your uh, trigonometry, but I think uh, hopefully that the training wheels are kind of off for this one, except for maybe the last problem with this stuff. All right, so we're back to page 255, and we're looking at some odd number problems. Number 35, this is what we're given in the problem, and that means we can divide this into two sections, like we did for the first part of for the previous section, but I'm going to continue doing this throughout because, like I said, trigonometry is a little bit of a different creature. So I can separate this into these two sections. I put the two and the three on the outside and focus only on the trigonometric function here. Now, uh, if you find sine x, uh, derivative of sine x in the column, it says that the function form is negative cosine x. So we replace this with that. Do the same thing with this. Find the cosine x in the derivative column, and you find sine x in the, in the functional column. And so this is going to give you negative 2 cosine x plus 3 sine x plus c. Or if you prefer to have uh, your positive sign first with a lot, which a lot of people like. Just rewrite this 3 sine x minus 2 cosine x to c. You can leave it in either form, but some people just like me, I'm wondering, that the first have a positive sign first, but I'm not going to demand it of you. For number 37, same kind of deal here. We're going to divide this up into two parts here. We have the 1 dt here and the cosine or cosecant t cotangent t here. We know from the previous section that this select does be t. Um, but over here, if you look for this in your, um, your right-hand column there, you're going to find um, cosecant tangent, cotangent tangent. Uh, the negative of that is in the, um, the cosecant. So the positive of this would be the negative cosecant. So you've got to watch for your signs on this. And negative times the negative is positive, so the answer is t plus cosine t plus the indefinite c. Okay? Right. And this one right here, um, yeah, I kind of put, put a little integration symbol in there. And then right there. Um, that's all right. So, again, divide the two, you look to see if you have this in the table, which you do is written as tangent. And of course, you have this in the table, which is written out as negative cosine theta. And then you put it together, tangent theta plus cosine theta plus c. See, it's really not that bad having a chart there to help you get through it. And then the last one is a bit of an issue, because there is nothing on there for tangent squared plus 1. So you're going to have to and this is something I like to do a lot when I'm given like tangents and secants and all that stuff. I like to work strictly with sine and cosine if I can, if I can get away with it. Most of the time I can't. And so since tangent is defined as sine over cosine, that means tangent squared is defined as sine squared over cosine squared. And since I have a denominator of cosine squared over here, I'm going to want the cosine squared over here. So the fraction of 1 will be cosine squared over cosine squared over y. Now I can make one fraction out of that because they have the same denominator. So sine squared plus cosine squared, which we know equals, we should know, 
why? And that is a big deal. You're going to have to know some of your basic fundamentals of trigonometry. Okay? And cosine squared stays down there. And that becomes secant squared y. And sure enough, we do have a secant squared in that column. And that is tangent of y plus the indefinite c. It's not too bad, so don't fear this. This should go pretty well, but uh, we may have to sharpen the trigonometry manipulation skills here for some of these and down the road as well. So, your practice problems, 55, 36 to 42 even. Have fun!